Hello, my name is Kevin Clay, and I will be leading you today on a webinar entitled Introduction to the XMAP. We will be talking about a tool called the XMAP or the input map, uh, a very important tool uh, in Six Sigma and a very important tool in the Six Sigma root cause analysis. The course agenda for today. We'll start out by talking a little bit about uh, our firm, Six Sigma Development Solutions, and, and what we do, what, uh, what our motivation is, what, what our uh, business model is. Uh, you'll get a brief introduction to your instructor. That would be myself, again, Kevin Clay. We will delve into uh, the, the actual XMAP. Now, understand that, that this is really just a introduction to the XMAP or the input map. Uh, this class is not really about uh, teaching you deeply how to fill out the XMAP. Uh, we have an hour in this course, and, and it, it uh, takes a while to really understand this tool. But we'll give you a high-level understanding of the tool, uh, and we'll give you access to our website, which there is a more detailed article, uh, plus a template that you can download uh, for the XMAP. We'll tell you briefly how to fill out the XMAP. Uh, we'll show you how the XMAP is used in the Six Sigma root cause analysis. And, and last, uh, we'll talk about scheduling a strategy session with you. Uh, this is really an important session, uh, especially if, if you're looking at Lean and Six Sigma to, to enhance your career goals. Let us help you to figure out how you can do that. Uh, we've helped many, many people personally and within organizations to, to uh, propel themselves through the organization or, or into different uh, jobs. So let's get started. Who am I? Uh, that's, that's a question that you know I, I think a lot of people on a webinar uh, should ask of the instructor. Who, who are you? What, what gives you the right to, to uh, teach me? Well, uh, I am a master black belt and lean master practitioner. I always put quotes around the word master because I don't really think there is one. Uh, I think it's a concept of the more that you, you learn in these methodologies, the more you find out that there's so much more to learn. Uh, and and that, that, that intrigues me and, and, and excites me. And I think that's really the epiphany of when you start to become a quote master. When, when you start having that thirst for knowledge and, and constantly upgrading your skill set. I am the president and the CEO of uh, Six Sigma Development Solutions. We are a global firm. We have over 50 contractors stationed uh, strategically throughout the world so that we can react quickly to uh, new new projects as they arise, new opportunity, opportunities as they arise. Um, we work with many organizations across the globe. Uh, and and we, we love to work with you, you and your organization. Uh, you see there is my, my email address. Uh, I give all of my students uh, my personal cell phone number. So if you ever have any questions, please call me, email me, text me. Uh, uh, send me information any way that you know how, and and I may not be able to answer you uh, quickly because I, I'm I'm probably teaching uh, or in project work, but but I will get back to you. So a little about myself and my credentials. I, I've had over 17 years operational experience in many different disciplines, like uh, manufacturing, all types of manufacturing. A distribution, processing, finance, retail sales, uh, worked with many insurance companies, uh, many healthcare companies all, all across the world, uh, IT companies, uh, worked in many different disciplines of, in IT, 
uh, and I've worked with nonprofits and and many local and state governments. So I, I've been around I've been around uh, quite a bit. I've I've seen a lot of things. I've seen uh, a lot of processes. I've seen a lot of processes fail, uh, and I've seen a lot of processes succeed. I've seen many implementations. I've been I've led many implementations, and and I've been a part of many implementations of both Lean and Six Sigma. And again, I've seen some fail, and I've seen many succeed. And, and and I and my colleagues really understand what what are the the true uh, traits or attributes of of a successful implementation. So I I personally have instructed 500 plus change agents across multiple disciplines. Um, I personally have led over 15 implementations in both domestic and global organizations. Uh, again, we work uh, in many countries around uh, around the globe. I've led or mentored over 86 Sigma industrial or transactional projects. I facilitated over 110 Kaizen uh, or workout projects. Really, workout is is more uh, more specific uh, terminology when it comes to uh, to healthcare. But Kaizen and Workout are, are basically the same thing. So again, myself and my colleagues, uh, we've 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 seen a lot of things. Uh, we've seen a lot of processes, uh, and we use this knowledge, this experience, to to really help transfer knowledge to our students. So as we teach these methodologies in our our uh, green belt classes, black belt, master black belt, lean agent classes. We, we back everything we say. We back up everything we say with stories, with, with real world, real world examples, scenarios that really makes it come to life for the uh, for the students, or it makes it come alive for the student. Uh, and that's that's a common theme in our in our evaluations. In our evaluations, uh, we we see we see a lot of this comment. You know, Kevin, it, it was like you you. We're in. You've been in our industry. You've 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 been in my my facility, in my in my hospital, in my business unit, in my plant. Um, but you know, I, I know that you've never been there. So how do you know? You know all these problems specifically that we're dealing with. Well, the answer to that question is again, y y your problems are replicated to other industries. Uh, and, and we have seen and we have solved those problems. We have helped those uh, those those teams uh, to implement Lean and Six Sigma uh, and tackle those problems. So, and that that makes you know the students feel really positive because they 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 say, okay, well this has been done before. So uh, hopefully you'll have a chance to come into our, our uh, one of our classes and and see this. Um, for or experience this for yourself. Now it's time to talk about the X map, or uh, as I call it, the input map. So the input map is is really getting down to to the six foot view of the process. It's very important in Six Sigma that that we we think of all processes in in a, an equation and that equation is y equals a function of x again y equals a function of x in the define stage we are defining the y we are defining the y or the output in the measure stage we are defining the x or the inputs, all right? In the analyze stage, that's where we really get into understanding the function that X has as it creates the Y, so that we can see what are the, the most significant Xs um, uh, that, or I'm sorry, what has the most significant effect on the Y. So the the input map is is uh, it's it's a very important tool in the uh, in the Six Sigma tool set, 
And this is where we should spend quite a bit of our time uh, understanding what all of those x's are. Because if we don't define an x, if we don't see an x, if we don't, we don't uh, identify an x, possibility is that that x could be a significant x. Um, and, and as we try to solve our problem, we're, we're not going to make as much of an impact. I tell my students that at this step in the game where you're defining the inputs, you're defining the inputs, uh, you're going to pull those inputs from from the, uh, the, the process flow, the process in the SIPOC. Now, in this webinar, we don't talk about too much about the SIPOC. Uh, we do have another web webinar that goes pretty deeply into uh, understanding what, this, what the SIPOC is and what it's for. All right, so the, uh, the uh, steps in your process, the P in your SIPOC, get moved over to understanding what your inputs are. Now, your, in, your inputs can, can be really identified and defined uh, many different ways. Uh, what, what I like to do in, in my projects and what I teach my students to do is, number one, uh, to do what's called the input map or the X map, and we're gonna show you how to do that. Uh, number two, we can actually just do a very rudimentary flow chart. All right. This is this is really where we get we we get the the knowledge out of the out of the SME's head. SME means subject matter expert or the person on the floor, the the person that really understands what's going on. That that operator who's in the trenches every day. Get them in there, and and uh, let's d define a very free flowing flow chart. All right for us to understand truly what goes on in, in the process. You'll find that, that a lot of your learning uh, of, of what this process is doing will come out of that flow chart. I, I also talk, uh, consult with my, my students and say, before you even get into doing the flow chart, before you ever put anything uh, on paper up on a wall, a flow chart using post-it notes, uh, etc. Before you ever do any of that, it would be a good thing if you actually went out to the process and kind of watched it. Uh, and and in Lean, we call this going to Gemba, going to Gemba. And we go to Gemba. We go to Gemba, and Gemba means the real place. We go to Gemba uh, with the notepad. And, and we do another, uh, uh, perform another Japanese method. Uh, it's called drawing, drawing, D-R-A-W-I-N-G, drawing. I, I have some of a southern accent, so uh, that might be a, a difficult word for, for people to hear. Drawing the Ono Circle, which is O-H-N-O, -O, all right? It doesn't mean oh no, like that's a bad thing, it's just... Uh, the person that 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 formalized this methodology was uh, was Dr. Ono. So go to Gemba, go to the real place, and and f stand someplace out of the way, uh, uh, someplace where you can see the process. And in 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 the Japanese methodology, they actually draw a, a uh, chalk circle around themselves, and they sit there with a notepad. Uh, and they sit there for hours. They actually don't sit there. They stand there for hours. And, and they take notes. They understand the process from the point in which the process is really happening. From doing this, you, your, your knowledge of, of the process is going to, you're, you're going to gain knowledge quickly. Uh, now, a lot of people ask me, well, if you go out there and, and you stand at the uh, in, in the process, aren't people going to react differently? Yes, they are at first. All right, you, you're going to um, uh, initiate something called the Hawthorne effect. The Hawthorne effect basically says, if I'm your boss or if I'm your peer and I'm standing uh, behind you, you know, above you or behind you or somewhere close to you, 
and you're working, because you know I'm there, you're going to do better. All right, so that skews the results in the beginning. But over time, over many hours of standing there, they're going to forget you're there. Especially if you stand kind of someplace out of the way. And they're going to, to move back into the, their natural uh, flow, into their, their natural way of, of performing their job. And that's when the gems of knowledge will come out. All right. So, again, I usually start out with a flow chart, a, 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 just a very rudimentary flow chart. Uh, in that flow chart, I use three colors, red, yellow, and green. Green post-it notes, all right, in, as we develop this flow chart, and I usually do this on a wall. I, I never start a, out a flow chart uh, with, with, with a digital medium like Visio. Okay, I like to get it up on the wall where everybody can interact and see. Steps in the process that are value-added steps are, are uh, labeled with green post-it notes, all right? And if you want to learn more about value adding steps, uh, we have a, a uh, another webinar called uh, um, Introduction to the Value Stream Map, which will give you more detail. Post-it notes that, that are yellow are for uh, what we call business value add steps. And then post-it notes that are in red, those are for non-value adding steps. Basically, what this does is over time, when you're building this flow chart, you're going to see it, it gives you a visual signal. It says it, you'll step back from this, this, this flow chart and you'll say, wow, most of this is red. So that's bringing in the concept of lean. And when you step back and look at this, this process map and you say, wow, it's 90 percent of it is red. That might that might flag you. That you know what it, this the defect that I'm trying to solve here it might be because because of complexity it might be because there are so many steps in the process that there there is more potential to create the error so in that case we might look at you know how do we take those steps out how do we remove those steps so again. This is why we do the, the flow chart first before we actually do the, uh, the input map, which I'll show you here in just a second. Again, before we do that flow chart, we go to Gemba, we draw the owner circle, we sit there and we watch. And when I say we, that, does, that just doesn't mean the, the change agent. That, that means the, the people in the process. That can mean the, the team, the SMEs, the subject matter experts. Now let's talk about the actual X map or the input map. And I'm going to take you through some of the steps uh, for the, the input map. Now the input map or the X map is, is really the second tool in the Allied Signal root cause analysis tool set or the Six Sigma root cause analysis tool set. The first step, I, I actually let me back up. Uh, again, I said it, it's the second tool. The first tool is the SIPOC. And, and the SIPOC, uh, again, uh, we talk about the SIPOC in depth in, in a, uh, another webinar, in, in our series of webinars. Uh, we, we go deeply into, the, uh, into that SIPOC. So from that SIPOC, uh, the P in the SIPOC, S-I-P-O-C, the P is the process. All right, in that SIPOC, we actually... Uh, we at, a, at about a 30,000 foot view, we, we list what are the, the very basic steps in the process, all right? Uh, and, and from those very basic steps, let's say we had six basic steps in a process. From those very basic steps, we then go to the input map or the X map, all right? From at, at this point, now each one of those basic steps, those six basic steps, and, and we're just picking six arbitrarily, but let's say we've got six basic steps. Step number one 
would, would actually be entered here. Okay, whatever that first step is, that's entered here under, uh, under process step one. Now, once we, once we have defined, once we have listed all of the steps, all right, and what we're looking at right now is, is only, only looking at the first step, but the, there's step two, step three, step four, step five, and step six. We're only looking at the first step, all right? So after we have listed all six steps in, in each of their process step box, we then come back and, and we, we then define what are the inputs that create that step, all right? This takes us back to that y is a function of x. In this case, each step is a y, all right? I'm sorry, not each step, but each step creates a y. Each step creates a y. Now we need to understand what are the x's and, and what are the y's that this, steps, uh, this step creates. So we, we look at the inputs, the process inputs, all right? And, and we can define these a couple of ways. Uh, there, there are a couple of methods to, to, to define these. Um, we should have our notes from, uh, from our going to Gemba. We should have our detailed notes from going to Gemba. All right, from those detailed notes, we can start putting in the inputs in kind of chronological order based on the notes that we have. All right, or we could look at the the uh, inputs in in another in another way, uh, and we can break them the inputs out uh, based on whether uh, the input is man, machine, material, method, measure, or Mother Earth. All right, so that's basically uh, using what's called the six M's. So man, man is really labor. All right. So how does how does labor how does how does how does a a person um, uh, how do they interact with with that process step? So if this process step was making uh, you know the whole process I guess would be making a peanut butter and jelly sandwich, and the first step would be let's say getting the materials, uh, uh, getting your materials. So when it comes to man or labor, we would say, okay, um, th there has to be, there has to be an operator. All right, there, there has to be an, uh, a, a physical being there to, to create the sandwich. All right, uh, when we talk about machine, Okay, machine could be um, that we have we have a a knife, a butter knife. All right, uh, that uh, material could be uh, the different materials that make up the peanut butter peanut butter and jelly sandwich, specifically uh, uh, crunchy peanut butter, jiffy crunchy peanut butter. We could have strawberry jam, a uh, certain make or certain type of strawberry jam. So what we're trying to get to here is we're trying to really understand what are what are the what are the all of the inputs that go into this step, and break that down by by uh, each of these segments. All right, and I will tell you that this is where people uh, make make uh, make the mistake of determining that. An input is insignificant, so therefore I'm not going to put the input uh, in this column. Your job as a practitioner, as a, a, uh, a lead, uh, I'm sorry, a change agent, or a uh, uh, green belt, black belt, uh, lean agent, etc. Your job is not to make the decision that an input is insignificant. Your job is to collect data. Any input 
any input that goes into that process is significant. Any input that goes into that process is significant. So if I have, if I have a, a, uh, recipe for making a peanut butter and jelly sandwich that I use, then, then that's, that's a very significant input. Um, if there is something that I have to write down as I'm making these peanut butter and jelly sandwiches so that I understand what I've done, the paper itself is an input. The pen or the pencil is an input. And you might think that's, that's a pretty insignificant, insignificant input. But what if I was making thousands of these peanut butter, peanut butter and jelly sandwiches? And, and what I wrote down helped me to understand, you know, at what point I was in the process. And if I didn't have that, uh, if I didn't have that, that uh, piece of paper or that pen, I wouldn't be able to do that. Therefore, that, that might cause me to, to make defects in the process. So it's very important that, that we don't uh, uh, arbitrarily say, well, you know, I don't think that input's uh, significant, so therefore I'm not going to put it. Whatever we see, uh, we put down. This is, again, it's very, it's, uh, it's optimal for us to go, go to Gemba and kind of watch the process because that'll help us to really start to define all the inputs. Uh, some problems that I see a lot of my students um, do is we, we, we get the SMEs in, the, in, in a room and we talk about what are the inputs. Well, the SMEs, you know, a lot of times take inputs for granted, like having a pen or a paper in front of them. Uh, that, that just seems very in insignificant, so therefore it won't get called out, it won't get identified. So going out and, and going to Gamba and seeing all those uh, specific inputs, it's very, very important for us to do that because that helps us to really define what those inputs are. So if you have very few inputs into a step, um, that should, should be a flag. Our next step is to determine <clears throat> whether that input uh, is value added or business value added or non-value added. This is, uh, uh, it really helps if, if, in this case, if we've actually done the process map first, uh, because then we can just kind of transfer the information from the process map on to, onto uh, this column. And, and a lot of people ask me, well, you know, if you do the process map, why are you doing the input map? Well, the input map, the, the process map is really to help us understand all the complexities in the process. In the input map, really what we're doing is, is we're, we're trying to fill out the equation y equals a function of x. Okay, so uh, in, in, in this case, uh, we're, we're then again understanding, you know, uh, is it complexity that's, that's really causing uh, the defect in the process or is the fact that I've just got all these non-value added activities going on uh, that that it's really complexity that that um, inherently is is causing the defect. The defect is happening in a non-value added step. So if I was to remove that non-value added step, I therefore most likely would remove the defect. Here we've defined what. Um, what equals the different value added activities? Again, customer value add, business value add, and non value add. So, customer value add is, is really anything that, that uh, adds form, function, or feature to your product or service. Basically, are you transforming one thing into another? All right, so if I am if I'm filling out a form, I'm turning that blank form into a form with information. Okay, if, if I'm building a widget, if I'm if I'm putting three subcomponents together to equal one one uh, one full component, uh, that would be considered value added. 
Now, business value add is really uh, kind of in limbo between customer value add and non-value add. How how uh, we add Six Sigma Development Solutions really define business value add is anything that that uh, law or regulatory requirements mandate uh, that that you enact the process. So. If a regulatory requirement like OSHA, FDA, USDA, etc., say that this has to be done, and in most cases, what what those re what those company or what those agencies uh, regulate and and uh, make you make you do doesn't really um, isn't really a a value added activity, all right? But if you don't do that activity, you could be fined or have your doors shut. The most important activity to focus on is customer value and uh, customer value adding. So in in lean specifically, we're really uh, focused on increasing the amount of customer value add versus non value add, okay? and that comes in in a uh, percentage that we use on our value stream map to help us understand. You know what is it? What is our true value added percentage? Uh, and what we're trying to do is we're trying to increase that proportion of value added uh, to non value added. Then we come up to uh, non value added. <clears throat> non value added is basically anything that falls into uh, the, the uh, waste. You know, some people say seven waste, others say eight waste. Uh, so any, any anything that falls into into those waste categories. So basically, I, I uh, have it defined here as this: If the customer knew we were doing this, would they request that we stop? So we can lower our prices. So if, if I was if I was in in a facility in in a manufacturing facility, and I see that there are forklifts, you know. Uh, driving, driving around the whole facility, and, and I, I see there are 30 different forklifts, and I know that forklifts does, they don't really add value to the process. Uh, all they're there for is to move stuff. But when you're moving stuff, you're actually not transforming the product uh, into the final good. So what I say, you know, why, why do you have these? Why don't you create a process to where you don't move things? Where everything is built in in one specific area, all right. That that's a non-value added activity. Uh, waiting, transportation, over processing, inventory. These are all non-value added um, uh, steps or activities. So in lean, our Goal is to eliminate non-value add, uh, non-value added activities. Uh, our goal is to eliminate these. In 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 some cases, you can eliminate the non-value activity by eliminating the step. So in in one of my uh, not one of my but in, in uh, many of my classes. I, I started out by showing a, uh, a video of a, a very wasteful process, uh, and this is a great video because it helps them, helps me to help, to help them understand, you know, what waste looks like in an actual process. And in this case, it, it's really a service process. Uh, and then afterwards, we have the discussion. You know, what what kind of waste did you see? Uh, and that kind of uh, lets the floodgates open up. And they, they, they define all these different wastes. And, and this process took it took 19 days in this process. Uh, I'm I'm not going to talk too much about the the video. Uh, you'll you'll if you come to our class, uh, any of our uh, green belt, black belt, uh, etc. Lean agent classes. We usually start this uh, start the class out with this video. Uh, and the video is is a great tool to get you in the mindset uh, of both waste and variation. 
so we we talk about the we, we talk about this waste and and we talk about this process that takes about 19 days uh and and we then ask them you know how would you improve the process uh and they come back and and we have a great discussion about that as well then we actually show them the video of the improved process what this company did to improve this process and they take it uh, take it down from a 19 day process down to 23 minutes and and the whole class every class i teach is are is just amazed but but they're also they go wow that was that was simple that there was there were there wasn't a lot to that you didn't you didn't have to spend a lot of money on automation you didn't have to spend a lot, a lot of money in capital you just did some, some a few very simple uh, tasks re-engineered the process and and it takes 23 minutes and and that that starts the the benchmark for the rest of the class because during the rest of the class they start to see you know what it really is easy i i really can do this uh and and our our thinking in our company or my thinking personally has just been so backwards so uh, again what we're looking for in 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 the lean side of things is really to eliminate uh, those those non-value added steps. So in this in this film, we actually see where we have eliminated most of the steps in the process. And by eliminating a lot of steps in the process, we actually took the the uh, defects that happen in those steps and and we got rid of them. Our next column is the uh, controllable or uncontrollable inputs column. This is really where we're, we're uh, defining the type of the input, uh, either controlled or uncontrolled. A controllable input is one that you can adjust while the process is in action. A, uncontrollable input are, are inputs that you either can't control in the process or you're uh, will, uh, unwilling to control because of you know cost company politics etc so let let me put this into a a scenario a scenario of mowing the lawn I, i'm sure most of you um, have uh, had the the chance to mow a lawn or uh, you you know you know uh, understand you know what it is to mow a lawn so let's say that i'm mowing a lawn uh, and the scope of my process is that that uh, the beginning of my scope is i'm i'm starting the lawn mower uh, i'm I've, I've got it started all right and i've got my hands on it and i'm about to push it i'm i'm going to start mowing the lawn and the end of, of my scope is I've mowed the lawn and I'm turning off the lawnmower because I'm finished. <clears throat> now, what are the, the controllable inputs in that process? Okay, the controllable inputs could be speed. I can actually change the speed. I can change my speed while in the process. All right, I can slow down or I can speed up. I can change the the pattern in which i mow the lawn so i might mow the lawn in an up and down pattern or i might mow the lawn in the pattern that's the shape of the lawn i could i could mow it in any kind of pattern but i can change that pattern on the fly <clears throat> i can also adjust the height of my cut so i can adjust the height of the lawn more all of these things I can actually change while the process is is um, uh, proceeding, going, uh, it, while it's in the process, while it's in process. Now, uncontrollable inputs are things that I can't control while in that process. Um, I, I can't control the weather, okay? Can't control the weather. I can't control uh, weather 
my blade is sharpened or not. Now I can I can control that before the process, previously to the process. But if I'm in the process and I and I start to understand that my lawnmower blade is not sharp because it, it's it's not cutting the grass uniformly. Uh, I can't sharpen the blade while in the process. I don't know about you, but I don't I don't necessarily want to turn the lawnmower over while it's running and sharpen the blade. In that case, I would have to stop the process that I'm in and start a new process. And that new process is removing the blade, sharpening the blade, uh, reassembling the blade, and, and then, then I can start my process of mowing the lawn uh, over again. But again, sharpening the blade would be a new process. I can't, sharp, I, I can't control whether it's sharpened or, or not in the process. So under type is where we determine whether our input is controlled or uncontrolled based on the definitions that, that we just learned. I will tell you that if you, if you have an operator, anytime that you have a human as an input, that human is always uncontrolled. Uh, the reason being is, is humans can, can uh, their, their demeanor, their personality could change day by day. All right, so I could have an operator that comes in one day uh, and he, he's just won the lottery. He, he's won $500 in a uh, scratch off. Pretty happy, happy guy, you know, I just won 500 bucks. That next day, driving to work, he gets uh, T-boned by another car, all right? So, you know, he's not hurt, uh, but, but his car's damaged, and he's got, he's got a $500 deductible on his insurance. So all the $500 that he just won is now going towards his deductible. Plus, he's late for work. So he comes in that day, and he's not very happy. So uh, do you think there would be a difference between uh, his, his output each day? Uh, yes, yes, definitely. Now, we can't control the operator, but what we can control is his environment. The more controlled his environment is, all right, the less chance that there will be variation between the day that he won uh, five hundred dollars in a in a scratch off ticket, and the day that you know he got hit by a car. So again, we can't control the operator. What we can control is his environment, his or her environment. So again, this is a really important uh, uh, column to us because it helps us to understand: uh, is our is our process, you know, what's what can we control or not control in the process? Uh, and that helps us to understand, you know, where 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 do we focus first when we start to to actually improve some of these key inputs. Next, we talk about the output column. All right, the outputs are are basically the outputs from the step, not from the inputs. Okay. Uh, the, the mistake I see many, many uh, students make in this column is if I've got 30 inputs, then I list 30 outputs. Uh, that's, that's, not, that's not the, uh, the concept of this column. The col this column is what is the output or outputs that come from the step? I could have 30 inputs and one output. All right, these, these outputs are the measurable outputs, the measurable outputs that come from the step. This is important for us to understand, you know, what are, what are, the, what are the measurables? What are the measurable outputs in each step? This helps us to start to break down 
um, our our outputs into into more detail helps us to understand you know what are the what are the many whys that we are uh, measuring to to see if there there is a change so uh, again very important to start look looking at our outputs in in measurable terms in another tab that you will see when uh, when you download the uh, uh, the Six Sigma root cause analysis which includes the SIPOC uh, the the input map uh, and it includes the CNE matrix and the FMEA when when once when you look at this download you're gonna see a tab in that Excel spreadsheet uh, that has uh, these uh, different uh, different attributes or aspects it has a column called controlled and measurable input variables targets uh, LSL which means lower spec limit and USL which means upper spec limit this is where we start to put in uh, our inputs from the input map from the X map uh, that actually have uh, measures that actually have specifications that this is really what, where we start to understand you know what 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 can we start to understand capability how can we start to understand capability of our inputs all right uh, th this again drills down into those measurements and helps us understand uh, of our our many inputs what can we actually put a ruler to well what what do we have that has a target a lower uh, and or upper spec limit this is really important for us to understand when we get into the the actual uh, uh, measuring of, of capability of uh, control uh, of what you know what what make what what's different in in, uh, in this process where you start doing multivariate analysis uh, statistical analysis hypotheses uh, testing as part of our webinar we would like to give you access uh, to an article which uh, basically has a lot of the information that we talked about uh, in this webinar so this article actually gives you uh, the detail of how to fill out uh, a, a X map or an input map uh, uh, also called a variables map and uh, the access is it, basically this link will take you to to that uh, to that article in that article we, we actually give you access again to a uh, uh, template and this template is is the uh, uh, root cause analysis template that in that template it gives you access to the, uh, the SIPOC the input map the CNE matrix and the FMEA now to learn how to fill all, all of these tools we have a series of webinars uh, to teach you how to fill out each of the tools um, and and if you uh, uh, go to our YouTube site you'll see that what what did we learn today what what new knowledge did we gain today we talked a little bit about um, our firm Six Sigma Development Solutions uh, you learned a little bit about uh, my myself Kevin Clay uh, your instructor uh, and and I first want to say thank you for uh, signing on to this webinar I've had uh, a lot of fun teaching you uh, there are many other webinars that we have in this series that, that I think you would enjoy we learned about uh, the introduction to the X map it gave you it gave you a little background on the X map the input map uh, how it fits into the uh, Six Sigma root cause analysis we talked a little bit about some of the things that you can use in conjunction with the X map like uh, just a, a very uh, rudimentary process flowchart uh, using red yellow and green uh, post notes and even before we do that we really need to go out to to uh, to the process go to Gemba see what's really going on we showed you how to actually fill out the X map or the input map uh, we showed you how the X map again is used 
in, in the in the four tools in the Six Sigma uh, root cause analysis tool sets. So now I, I'd like to talk to you about um, scheduling and strategy session. Before I do that, let, let me back up. Uh, I, I know this is a, a recorded webinar, so we're not going to have the actual interaction of, uh, of a question and answer. But what I do want you to do is if you have any questions, uh, please email me, uh, send me a, a text, uh, get, get a hold of me any way that you, that you can. Uh, and, and as we move to the next slide, I'll, uh, I'll give you the information again uh, that you can get a hold of me. But uh, I, I would love to, to hear your questions uh, or to read your questions, and I will get back to you as soon as possible. Most of the time I'm teaching, uh, my colleagues are teaching, so you know, we may not get back to you immediately, but we will get back to you. So again, I'd like to talk to you. Uh, I'd like to uh, uh, talk to you about scheduling what we call a strategy session. So let's move into it all starts with a conversation. We've helped thousands of uh, people and many organizations to reach their goals. And, and really, we, we would like to uh, schedule a call with you to discuss, you know, what are your goals? We'd like to know kind of what makes you tick. Uh, what are your career goals? What, what, are, what are your goals when it comes to uh, these methodologies, Lean and Six Sigma? And, and I guarantee you these these methodologies, if if learned correctly uh, and used correctly, can really help to propel you personally and professionally and your organization uh, to to new heights. You, you you can transform your organization and yourself. So again, we'd like to schedule a call with you to really to discuss. You know, what are your individual lean and six sigma goals? You know, what are your career goals? What, uh, where do you do you want to start? You know, is this the beginning of your journey, or further your Lean and Six Sigma certifications? And it's very important in in the in this space to to have those credentials, uh, to have those certifications. Um, but it it it's really is is isn't going to do you a lot of good. Uh, I'm sorry. Let me back off. Get get taking the classes is is going to uh, give you great knowledge. It's going to give you great tools that will follow you for the rest of your life. But if your company doesn't value Lean and Six Sigma because they don't really understand it, uh, that's gonna going to kind of stunt your career growth. So help us to understand. You know, does your company currently support Lean and Six Sigma? And if it doesn't. Let us help you to help your company understand how it can help them. Uh, again, we worked with with hundreds of companies and taken them from, uh, you know, I don't know anything about Lean and Six Sigma, and I'm very, very um, defensive, scared of, you know, it's going to cost me millions of dollars, uh, and that's not true. So let us help to educate uh, your your organization about Lean and Six Sigma. And if your organization really values these methodologies and you get your certifications within these methodologies that will help propel you throughout your organization. So let us help you achieve your, your career goals. Uh, if you would like to do that, please uh, call me or email me uh, to schedule a 30 minute conversation and, and let us really you know, help uh, to to propel you. So I hope you have uh, left this webinar today with uh, more education than you came in with. We, we have many more educational webinars uh, uh, for free on YouTube. So I invite you to, to uh, go out and, and look at those. We also have these webinars in a live version once a month. So you can actually listen to the same webinar and, and ask questions of myself or one of my colleagues that is giving uh, the uh, webinar. So again, if, if you uh, want to get a hold of me, you, you have my uh, uh, information in front of you. And I hope to uh, see you, hear from you. 
uh, in, in other webinars. Have a great day.